G'day, it's Rob here again. Well, it's been a while since I've done a YouTube video. Been having a bit of a break, got a bit burnt out doing all those videos uh, over the last few months. And it's been too bloody cold, it's been like 12 degrees in the workshop. Too damn cold to be down here freezing your nuts off. So, uh, apart from a bit of maintenance work on a few things, a bit of welding, I did a welding job, and uh, the old ute needed a bit of work. The only thing I've been doing is playing around with that little Stirling engine, and I've been doing quite a bit of this over that little Stirling engine. It's called thinking, not drinking, thinking. The drinking is just there to help with the thinking, you know. It's like any machine has to have lubrication and the brain is a machine, electronic machine. And so, anyway, just to play safe, I'll make sure it's well lubricated. Uh, doctor's orders. Doctor, Doctor Rob's orders. <laughs> well, if one thing doesn't get, it gets you, something else will, so I'm also go happy. Anyway. So I've been thinking about the Stirling engine and I've gone through and pulled up bits and I actually pulled down the Banggood beam engine and fixed that up. The little Stirling engine had a loose rocker um, pillar thing and, and well I had it apart I had a good look over and measured a few things and cut a long story short I've incorporated the measurements from that into the modifications I've done on the Stirling and I've Eliminated some friction, put a twin ball race crank in it, and uh, instead of a single big one. Anyway, I'll show you where I'm at with it. Just a short video, and you can check out the progress. So here it is. It's pretty much similar to what I had before, except that I've split the hot and the cold cycles, the sections. And we've now got a insulated uh, section between them. This is that really hard steel, that uh, junkyard steel I machined up in one of those last videos and had trouble with. It actually got there in the end. Machined a lot like stainless. It actually heats up and gives a goldy colour a bit like stainless, so maybe it is stainless, I don't know. It's, it's weird stuff, but it's certainly difficult to machine. But I got a nice finish in the end, and uh, yeah, all worked out well. I had a flat, well, this has got a flange on it, and the idea was that these bolts here would go through the flange, but I couldn't drill through this hard stuff with 3 mil drill, even tried annealing it, but it did nothing. So I made up a separate alum, aluminium flange that uh, just pulls it all up. There's an O-ring in there, and this is just home car stuff once again. You can see you know, it does a good job. You can make your own aluminium, it's just cast it up, it's easy. and. Uh, Save plenty of bread. Now the displacers, I've actually machined up three different displacers. There's a fourth one in there actually, so yeah, four I've made overall. This is stainless, you know, pretty good accuracy eh, for a cheapy old lathe. And these two are aluminium. Uh, then I varied the stroke lengths. I finished up finding out that the displacer was touching, so I then had to lengthen the displacer rod guide, which basically went from here to here. Well, now it goes right through up to here, so it's twice as long. So there's no way the displacer can touch the walls of the hot side. And uh, I've actually had this running, and it ran quite well, uh, you know, overall. But I'm still not satisfied. And then I made up a. Uh, Two bearing crank, which is you've got a bit of a weave in it, but I've got to rework that because when I uh, lock tighted the shaft and I didn't have it quite square, I'll just heat that up, take it out. I'll mount this in the three jaw chuck and then I'll put the, the crank pin in the tail stock in a collet, and put some lock tight on and then just keep it in position while it sets and it should be 100% accurate. So I just did this freehand and it's not too good anyway. What else? Yeah, yeah. This morning I've worked on this. Now this is the 
the dash pot that goes in here and then this piston and rod goes on it makes the thing you know do its business and what happened was the motor got hot and overheated and the glue on here between the the pyrex and the stainless went soft and I, when I unscrewed it it came apart so I've super glued it back together and it seems pretty good pretty strong and super glue super glue apparently was good up to about 180 C so that's pretty good but just to play safe I'm going to, I've machined up a, a stainless steel collar did that this morning and that will fit over there and then it will screw on like that and that, the the Pyrex and the stainless will be glued together with some of this stuff which is black silicon adhesive which is good up to about 400 C now the reason I'm using that is uh, I want a decent thickness I, I can allow for expansion and contraction I don't want anything too rigid I could have made that a, a Loctite fit or something like that but I haven't I've deliberately made it loose so I can allow for expansion and contraction because they do expand at different rates these materials I mean the Pyrex and the stainless are as close as you can get of metals brass is twice as much expansion as this or three times as much as this stuff and aluminium's damn sight worse so stainless is as close as you can get and that's why they would have used a stainless end on it to begin with so that's the next project what I have to do now is use some of this silicon gooby goo and uh, let it stand overnight and then I can put it back together so yeah that's where it's all at it's going on quite nicely really it's been a very interesting project you know you just can't rush these things you just got to think them through and you know yeah, you know, I've had it running as I said, but I want to get it better. I'm never satisfied with these things. That's the trouble with these little motors. I work on them, and I'm never satisfied. I keep tinkering and tinkering, and eventually they self-destruct if something serious happens. But yeah, it's interesting. So if you've got a small lathe, you know, once you've got your lathe and you've made your tooling and you've learned how to use it, take on a project like this, and it will show you how good you really are at machining. I mean, just on this side here, I mean. The centre of the guide and the guide and this all have to line up, the mounting block, and then this plate here plus the cooler plus the hot end all have to be exactly aligned as well. So you've got about five or six components that are all going to be precisely machined or the thing won't ever work. So yeah, you know, you've got to have reasonable skills and people that say oh those Chinese lays they're junk they're no good you can't machine can't get the accuracy out of those things mate I'm talking about the ass. I mean I did all this on the Chinese lathe except for the drilling out the conrod uh, which I did on the little share line oh and I did a bit on the children as well but you know like people that say this stuff they really are idiots and uh, that's all you can say about them so that's it for now now, just before I do uh, sign off, I've got to give a, uh, a shout-out to a channel that I've been looking at lately, and I really like it. I think it's a great little channel, and he hasn't got a lot of subscribers. And I hope you all will have a look at his channel and maybe subscribe, and that's Cliff's Shed. Now, Cliff's Shed is uh, it's a uh, interesting site. He's got you know, a lathe and he does anodising, he shows you how to do home anodising, uh, he's got a, uh, a British lathe and a Chinese lathe too I think, and he buys and reviews his own tools and stuff and uh, he built his own suds pump in the last video which is really interesting, I found that really, really interesting. Yeah, he's an all around good guy and uh, yeah, I always like giving shout outs to channels that are on the up, people are trying their hardest and uh, putting in a good effort and yeah, he does does nice work and it is work making YouTube you know like it's a lot of work to shoot video uh, you always get interruptions barking dogs and kids and trucks and you might shoot something 10 times to get it right so yeah just you know when you watch them just think there's a lot of work going on some of these videos anyway that's it for me give Cliff a, a look and uh, tell him you know Rob sent you but uh, no Top little channel. All right, that's it from me. Uh, to show you I haven't fallen off the perch, I'm still kicking. And uh, yep, until next time. Cheers.
See you around.